हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द शो बॉटम ऑफ रिसर्च विद हर्षित तोष्णीवाल दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डू अ डीप डाइव ऑन हॉस्पिटल सेक्टर वी आर आल्सो गोइंग टू कवर 10 ऑफ इट्स लार्जेस्ट लिस्टेड नेम्स इट्स अ सेवन पार्ट वीडियो सो फॉर बेस्ट अंडरस्टैंडिंग वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू ऑल टू हैव अ लुक एट ऑल द सेवन एंड वन एडिशनल थिंग इफ यू फाइंड दिस वीडियो यूजफुल देन प्लीज लाइक इट सब्सक्राइब इट एंड शेयर इट विद मोर पीपल लेट अस स्टार्ट नाउ hi friends now let's come to the second part of the hospitals industry primer in first part we discussed about the basics of hospitals we discussed the type of disease profile and we also discussed the various case mix for different hospitals in this part what we are going to cover is who pays the hospital bills basically we are going to look at the customer segment for the hospital there are typically 3 to 4 type of customer segments cash or self paying customers there can be insurance companies who will pay on behalf of their uh, policy holders then can be government who pays it on behalf of many of the government and central government state government schemes and finally we are also going to look at the profitability of the different payer categories so let's start when we look at the customer segments for hospital typically there are five uh, types of customer the first one is the cash paying one basically someone who pays the hospital bills out of his or her own pocket the second type of customer is third party aggregator or insurance business and when we say tpa oblique insurance we mean a private insurance uh, in this particular category so if someone has taken policy from say star health or icc or lombard uh, then and if that particular hospitalization case gets covered in their Uh, overall policy scheme then the hospital expenses is going to be paid by the insurance company to the hospital so this is the second category of business the third and fourth category of business we try to combine so the psu business is nothing but a insurance business but which has taken from one of the public sector insurers so there are four psu insurers in india national new india united oriental uh, when you take an insurance from these companies and use that for paying your hospital bills then it's considered a psu business why is psu and private insurance business considered two separate because the business of the private insurer is relatively better than psu business from an hospital's perspective two reasons one the rates are higher in the private one because psu insurers negotiate through gipsa which is a body which Uh, aggregates all the health insurance policies of the four PSU insurers, and that Gipsa is the one who tries to bargain it with the hospital community. It's a very long-standing community, and which has a very strong bargaining power. So, to that extent, the rates which you get in PSU insurers are lower. Second advantage of private insurance is receivable cycle. So, it is better than PSU business. So, which is why TPA insurance business overall. has a better profitability characteristics versus psu insurance business the fourth business government business is something which is a case where central government and state government pay the hospital bills that happens when the patient has come under a government scheme like ayushman bharat we are going to look about look at the ayushman bharat scheme later on in the coming slide uh, and finally there is a fifth type of business which is the international business now in india the prices of different health surgeries is far far lower than what it is in us right take the example of a heart bypass surgery in india it costs 5 lakh rupees versus us where it will cost 1 crore plus so there is a very big difference in the hospitalization expenses in india and which is why we see a lot of international patients coming to india for getting their a uh, surgery done so these are the five category of customers for any hospital we look at the cash business and tpa business together because of their relatively similar profitability matrix uh, obviously cash is slightly better than insurance business but for the sake of simplicity we look at the cash and insurance business together that forms around 75 80% for most of the hospitals 70 to 80% of the overall business comes from cash and insurance again this is the fi 22 numbers for most of these players so which is why it's not uh, representative of a normal year because this year there was lower international business international business in india is highest in areas of delhi and chennai 
uh, which is why when we look at the Delhi focused hospitals like Max, Fortis, uh, Medanta, over there will fight the international business to be around 8 to 9 percent of the revenue. Pre COVID, this number used to be even higher. Uh, around 15, 10 to 15 percent is a normal number of international revenue mix in a steady state. I think over 23, 24 as international travel resumes, this is again going to pick up. And the third part is government and PSU business, which forms around 15 to 20 percent of the revenue for most of the hospitals today. Uh, it's very high in case of maybe an HCG, Narayana, Shalbi. Uh, but one more reason is that if your hospital is running at a low occupancy, uh, then it makes sense to even do the government and PSU business because it helps you at least meet some of your overall overheads. But again, uh, out of all the three, the most profitable business is international. The second most profitable business is cash and insurance and government business is one of the least profitable businesses amongst all. Uh, one important thing uh, uh, to note here is that when we look at healthcare, it has always meant uh, and understood to be something which should have been taken care of by the government uh, and that is what it happens in most of the country we look at us when we look at uk the out of pocket expenditure basically which a patient meets from his own pocket is something which ranges at around 10 to 20 percent in one of the more in countries like uk us even in countries like Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, the out-of-pocket expenditure is roughly around 30 to 35%. But in India, that number is very high. Around 60 to 65% of overall healthcare expenditure is met by the patient himself. Why? I think there are two reasons. One is India as a whole is a very underinsured country. Let so Today, if we assume we are around 140 crore population, then out of that 140 crore, those who are having a health insurance of their own and even including those who have a health insurance provided by their employer right we have total 12 percent of the overall population covered the rest around 90 percent of the overall population is having no insurance or having a government insurance which is not very inadequate in terms of its coverage now what has happened is that uh, over time the insurance penetration has been improving. This 12% number is expected to go up. We can see that in terms of the health premium collected by the health insurance companies that has been growing at a very good pace of 20% over the last six to seven years. And which is why there is expectation of this number to go up, which will help ease out the out of pocket expenditure. Now, the second reason why it remains so high in India, the out of pocket expenditure is that before 2018, we never had a very all encompassing health insurance scheme, right? So a large part of population uh, making them understand health insurance as a concept, the need for having it for bad times is something which is very difficult and neither did India had the financial muscle. A large part of India will not have the financial muscle to bear that burden. So what government did is that in 2018, they launched Ayushman Bharat scheme. What the scheme said, it's a scheme entirely funded by government 60 percent of the expenditure is borne by central government 40 percent is borne by state government what it does is that it covers around 10 crore families of india and it ensures that every family has a coverage of rupees 5 lakh now what happens is that assuming five member family what this scheme does is that it basically creates 50 crore beneficiaries uh, out of the scheme and every family uh, so of the 10 crore families, everyone has around 5 lakh rupees of cover, which they can use for any health needs or any health emergency over a period of time. So the coverage of 5 lakh is not adequate for a family of 5, right? It leaves you with very limited amount uh, of uh, leeway or basically the cost of treatment is much higher than what the insurance would be able to cover up. But having said that, what it does is that it at least introduces people to the idea of insurance and as more and more families of the 10 crore grow economically become a, uh, a part of the better uh, GDP environment. So basically they, their, their income profile improves. They will be able to at least shift from the Aishman Bharat scheme and move to the employer employee insurance or self insurance uh, category. So I mean broadly these are the factors which drive the overall out-of-pocket expenditure and as this expenditure 
met by that self person reduces for insurance for hospitals the benefit is that the affordability quotient of the overall population will keep on increasing now let's move to the other part on the international we touched upon that the hospital rates in india are uh, hospitalization rates in india are much cheaper than what they are globally take the case of a hip replacement surgery it costs around seven thousand dollar around five lakh rupees uh, in india and that same hospitalization for hip replacement will cost around fifty thousand dollar in us uh, which is roughly around 50 lakh rupees heart bypass we discussed that in india it cost five to six lakhs but in us it is going to cost you one crore plus uh, in INR terms so which is why when we look at the internet the number of foreign medical tourists in india that has been growing at a 30 percent kegar in fi 19 there were around seven lakh medical tourists this forms around six percent of the overall foreign tourists in india which is a very high number and it is expected to grow at a much faster rate when i look at the region in india where most of the international tourism uh, takes place one is delhi which is one of the most famous regions it has one of the best hospitals and infrastructure so 40 45 percent of the international business resides here and 20 25 percent of the international business happens in chennai uh, if i look at the countries from where india receives international tourists afghanistan is one of the uh, the Middle East part is an important country. Iraq, Afghanistan is is uh, one part. From Africa, we receive a lot of uh, patients, and also from Bangladesh region. Government is trying to uh, improve the visibility of the Indian hospitals and to make it an informed across globe about the difference in the rates. As well as the quality of the healthcare in India, which is at par to the global standards, through Heal in India campaign. So you would listen many of the people talking about Heal in India, and a lot of beds are coming in the Delhi region. The expectation is that as Heal in India picks up, the demand from international business is going to remain good. One more thing, if I look at the hospital business, uh, this is how their overall. When I look at the three segments: government business, PSU business, cash, and private insurance business and the international business the revenue rates basically the pricing rates vary across three so for a similar treatment government business will be 35 percent lower than a normal insurance business similarly medical travel international is going to be around 30 to 40 percent expensive than a cash business so basically for the same treatment you receive a very varied rate of overall revenue in hospital business it is difficult to reduce the cost uh, by a large extent irrespective of whatever category the patient is yes you can obviously save some on the nurses cost the location of the hospital the rentals you pay but by and large there is not much variability which your cost lines offer as a result of which if i see the overall cash tpa business margin to be around 20 percent my government business margins are much lower than that they range in the single digit uh, number and my medical travel and international tourism business gives me a margin of around 30 to 31 percent and at a blended level if hospital makes 20 but at a segmental level it is the international business which subsidizes the government business having said that this is also an important part that government wants international travel to go up because that additional margins is something which hospitals can use to offset their losses in the government business right and it's a win-win situation for government uh, itself because they get to do that social aspect along with hospitals being able to maintain their overall profitability we are going to discuss about the uh, unit economics and the various costs in the part four uh, in the part three of our presentation so friends this is where we end the part two uh, in part three we are going to discuss about the economics of hospital the doctor engagement model do you own the land or do you rent a uh, land what is the irr of a hospital over a three-year period of over a 20-year period and then we are going to also cover the various hospital chains followed by the stock preferences 
so uh, thanks a lot for watching stay tuned hi friends so i come to an end to this part of my presentation and like hospitals i wish to cover more number of sectors over time uh, i've done a similar work on cement industry uh, the link to that is in the description below would love to hear your feedback and any other sector you want me to cover but have a great day thank you